Okay. Hello, everyone. I am super excited because this is the launch of my new podcast about winning at the game of life, specifically when it comes to entrepreneurship. And when it comes to entrepreneurship, it has to do in all areas of your life. So I have one of the, or if not the best podcaster in the world that teaches other people how to podcast. It teaches, it's actually inspired me uh, to launch this podcast in 2023 versus waiting. And he'll, you know, he'll talk about this more. So it is my great honor, Rob, to introduce you, to tell the world about you. So if you wouldn't mind, before we get started, would you mind reminding me or telling the audience how you pronounce your name? Uh, my name is Rob Cressy, and thank you so very much for having me. Yay! No, I'm super excited. And, you know, just for the audience, I'm a real human being, and because this is my first podcast, and because I know Rob knows everything about podcasting, I'm actually nervous. I've done other interviews. I've, I've done things like this before, but for whatever the reason, once I hit record, this is the power of you know, being, being real and transparent is that once I hit record, I actually got nervous. <laughs> so this is why you hear me a little bit, uh, uh, on the nervous side. So I'm going to, so that I don't leave anything off, Rob, I'm going to, I'm going to read. And then I would like for you to actually go into a little more depth into what you do. So Rob Cressy is a personal growth coach, helping people become the best versions of themselves. He, he believes in building better habits, mindsets, and ways of being a better human being. Hence why I have him on this podcast to keep winning at the game of life. And then he'll go into more detail. And then if you wouldn't mind going into more depth into what I just described then. Yeah, I help people become the best version of themselves, show up powerfully and do more of what they love. And for me, this is all about lifestyle design, that I've lived several lives in my life. I was in the corporate world for a long time. And then 12 years ago, uh, I left my job, went to zero and went all into my dreams of being a full-time creator and entrepreneur. And in the process, uh, I specialized in my own personal growth and in development and transformed myself so much so that people and brands started to hire me as a coach both for mindset and personal growth, but also on brand building and launching a podcast. So for me, I really think of creating two ways, internally and externally, your mindset and your heart set, externally, your brand, your podcast, and what you want to create in the world. I love it. And speaking about your brand and everything that you're creating in the world, one of the, one of the ways that, that, or the way that we, uh, we actually met is because of BYLR. And I see that you have BYLR as well. There you go. Uh, you know, I, I was blessed and fortunate to be in Jesse Itzler's uh, mentorship program, where one of the experts that Jesse Itzler brought was you, Rob. And it was all about podcasting and how, how to do a proper podcast. And speaking about how to do a proper podcast, one of the things that I don't have right now, because it got, it got, uh, delayed in shipping was the microphone because that was one of the things that you spoke very highly of. So it's not that I disregarded it, is that I wanted to not keep postponing, you know, this launch. So uh, I, I am so blessed for many, many reasons, but one, this is one of the blessings that I got from Jesse was you, you know, learning how to do a proper podcast. So can you, can you tell, can you tell us as to why you believe so passionately and why you left a stable corporate career, because this is all about teaching people, you know, tips and, and, and hacks and anything that you can share about winning at the game of life, specifically with entrepreneurship. So my dreams were on the other side of learning how to podcast. So uh, at the time when I left my corporate job, my dream was to work in sports and get paid to talk about sports for a living. And someone said something to me that changed my life forever. They said, Rob, if you ever hope to get paid to do what you love, you better be doing it already. And I was like, all right, I want to get paid to talk about sports for a living. How in the world do I do that? Well, if I'm somebody who talks about sports, I should probably be talking about sports on camera with a microphone. And this is before podcasting was like a thing. 
This is 12 years ago. So for me, I was like, oh, all right. Well, I'll create my own show so that I'm talking about sports so that eventually someone will hire me because they've seen me talking about sports over and over and over again. And that single seed changed my life forever because since then I've published over a thousand podcast episodes. I've been the host of my own podcast. Brands have hired me to host their shows. And the reason I'm so passionate about it is because my dreams are literally on the other side of me learning how to podcast. So a lot of people are challenged by uh, the fears, the judgments, and the self-limiting beliefs, the reasons why I cannot. I was the complete opposite. I was like, I have every reason in the world to do so because I'm no longer working in a cube farm. I'm waking up every single day excited for what the day has ahead because I'm doing what I love. And what I love to do was create and be a full-time creator. So that got me to eventually become so good at this that I opened up a content studio that helps thought leaders and brands launch their own podcasts. Because after doing it enough, people are like, Rob, can you show me how to do it? And I was like, sure. And then I built out a marketing agency and a production company and all of these things because this is really just what I wanted to do every single day. Can you go more into, so tell us more about how is it that you launch, do you launch, so is it a studio that people go in and they, they get trained by you as to how to do a podcast or can you tell us more about that? Completely virtually and Maria, you actually experienced a version of this. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening is hundreds of people over the course of the last 12 years would say, Rob, how do I launch a podcast? Rob, how do I launch a podcast? To where I was tired of having the same conversation over and over again. So I said, cool, I will create a course and a program to help people easily launch a podcast. So what I did is I reverse engineered everything that I learned the hard way. I had no one to guide me. I had to figure this out. So the beautiful thing is I know exactly where everybody is right now because I was there. I started at zero just like everybody else. And I learned things the hard way. I spent hours looking into microphones. I have no technical background, no experience in this whatsoever. So I'm not some sort of person who just like popped out of the womb being like, oh, you know how to do all of this. I knew how to do none of this. So like I said, I spent like three hours on what microphone do I use? You can go down those rabbit holes. Well, guess what? For the people who work with me, I'm like, here's a low, medium and high end budget. They're done in five minutes. Huh? Do you think you would like to have two hours and 55 minutes back in your life? Now imagine every single step of the podcast launch process. And here's the thing. This isn't just about the launch itself. The launch is only one of three phases. So uh, in the process of doing this for a long time, I've gotten really good about how to frame this and how to processitize this. So one of my favorite quotes is, the bigger the dream, the deeper the foundation. The reason that people work with me is to build a solid foundation that allows them to scale everything that they're doing. Because uncertainty leads to inaction. When you don't know what to do next, you're likely to do nothing. And once again, I learned that the hard way. So instead of saying, how in the world do I do this? You say, oh, I work with Rob because Rob knows the process for how to easily launch a podcast and do it fast. So there's another quote that I love. The longer it takes to launch your podcast, the greater the chances of it not happening. And why is that? Because I know that business and personal life and health reasons and fear and judgments and self-limiting beliefs pop up at all different times. I've seen it through all phases of the podcast launch process from people who are like, boom, Rob, here's the money. And I never hear from them again, all the way to the people who get, all you gotta do is push live and your podcast is there. And they just move on because they're working on another project. I've seen it all. So for me, it is so important to have someone who has been there before who can say, here's the exact steps to do it. 
And that's going to increase your confidence. And it's going to increase your quality. And you're actually going to do more of what you love sooner. And then here's the thing. I help people go from zero to launching their podcast. But then there's two other phases after that. Episode zero to episode 20. And this, Maria, is where you are right now. Because you are learning how to ride a bike. AKA, you launched a podcast. And when you, first, when you first ride a bike, you got training wheels. And you're a little shaky and you're figuring it out. So for me, as it relates to podcasting, I say it takes 20 episodes for you to have the light bulb moments go off and say, oh, I get it now. 20 conversations with people like Rob, where you show up and you get a little bit better, 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 and then the training wheels come off. And then once by episode 20, and I know this will happen for you, you're going to sit there and you're going to send me a DM and you're going to go, Rob. I can't believe the first episode we recorded together. I almost want to re-record it because I'm so embarrassed on how bad I was. And it's not that you are bad or not good. You've just grown. And there's a difference. I help people immediately level up. Like immediately you're a better podcast host because you know what you're doing. When you don't know what you're doing, you're just sort of, uh, like a leaf in the wind just blowing around. But when you've got that solid foundation, boom, better, 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 better. Boom. By episode 20, you're like, oh, I got it. I'm fast. I'm quick. I know what I'm doing. I've added polish to this, which brings us to the third phase of the podcast launch process or the podcast brand building process, which is episode 20 to 100 plus. Now that the light bulb moments have gone off, you're doing the proverbial wheelies on your bike. No more training wheels, no more shaky. You're like, oh, I get this for what this is. And all a podcast is, is a platform for growth. And so often we get so romantic about what a podcast has to be. How long does it have to be? What do I have to say? What's my intro? What's my outro? But what you really learn is how to break all the rules because you just learned the rules so that you can show up every single day and execute a high quality podcast that delivers value for your audience. So you're no longer concerned on, I don't know what I'm doing, or I'm not going to do this anymore. And now you can say, oh, I can do five minute episodes, 30 minute episodes. I can have a guest. I can have no guests. I can do three episodes a week. I can do five episodes a week. You name it. Because now you understand that the power is in the platform. Every time you launch a podcast episode is an opportunity for someone to know, love, and trust you. For you to plant a seed and have positive impact on somebody else's life. I love it. And, and you know, the, uh, me interviewing you is a true testament of your inspiration. And obviously also Jesse bringing you to my awareness and, and, and the gift of being being part of Jesse Itzler's program and mentorship program that otherwise mm. I would have, I would have been one of those people that you talk about that I'm thinking about, <laughs> you know, that phrase that you talk about, because I couldn't, I, I had, I had, when, when you first taught us how to do this, I had, I had put it for November 11 and I kept pushing it out, pushing it out. But as, as we're finishing off the year with Jesse Itzler and I keep seeing your face and I keep seeing your you know, you're going through my feed. I kept thinking, I know enough to just get it going, you know? And as I was preparing, I was, I was preparing with you and you said, I'm thinking about doing X, Y, or C. It really, it really gave me the insight of that everything that you have taught us and everything that I've learned from Jesse is like, do it now, right? Don't do it perfectly. Don't do it when you, when I think everything is going to align because I'm going through some transitions that I thought it'll be better if I just wait until 2023 when I'm actually ready. So with everything that you're saying, you know, this very podcast is a true testament of what you have taught me as to get it done, you know, and show up and, and just, just, just go with it basically. Yeah, and I have to give you much love for doing that because action over excuses. And 
Uh, someone was recently slid into my DMs, who's part of the community, and said, uh, Rob, I've really been excited to launch a podcast, but I've got three topics that I want to do, and I just can't choose one, and I don't know what to do. And I'm like, just choose one. She's like, yeah, but I don't know which one. And I was like, choose zero, and you will create zero. Choose one, and you will create the world. And that's the thing that people just don't get. When you sit there, zero, 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 you're not even in the game. And once you finally choose anything, now you have an opportunity to create that impact, to create that growth and get better. And Maria, you even talked about this right at the very beginning. And I love how circular this conversation is going to be. You're like, Rob, I'm a little bit nervous right now. <laughs> and guess what? That is a good thing because when you're at zero, you're not nervous because you didn't get to experience what it was like to hit record and actually do this for the first time. Because once you get to episode 20, you're not going to be nervous anymore. So start the process. Jesse talks about this. Come on, man, get there faster. Start the process, start the process. And it really drives me nuts because of how much I love people and how much potential I know is inside of them. When I see them not being able to get out of their own way. And this can be so simple because where I am right now, I could launch a podcast in one hour or less. Literally, I could do it literally with you right now. I could do, 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 done. And you're like, Rob, how in the world is that possible? All right. I'm going to create a podcast called Three Minutes in Heaven with Rob, where once a week, I'm going to give you one nugget of wisdom for three minutes to inspire you to have a good day. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Three Minutes in Heaven with Rob. I'm Rob Cressy. And here is today's nugget of inspiration to get your day started off right. Insert whatever I'm going to say. All right, guys, I'll talk to you next week. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. Hit me up on social media on all platforms at Rob Cressy. Boom, done ships. Next, I could literally record 15 of those in an hour and be done for the next six months. You know, and that, th that takes me to the next point because, you know, there's a lot, I, I, if I remember correctly, I think you had mentioned that 20 minutes is a good, is a good time of amount for a podcast. And then there is the Lewis House, you know, and, and other people of the world that that they kind of, you know, that they kind of go on forever. And the reason I like those is because I can go on a run, on a long run, and I can just listen to them. And it just, to me, I love listening to whether it's something from Jesse or something from Lewis. But one of the things that I love about, especially it happened in 2020, if it wasn't for 2020, the pandemic that happened, that a lot of us we're trying to figure out how to get our voice out, right? If we were used to being on stages, if we were used to being on different places, all of a sudden the world brought us to where we needed to find a different solution. And thank goodness for uh, Lewis House, because one of the ways that I actually ended up finding out about Jesse Itzler was because Lewis House had so much information on him, right? And what I love about having a podcast with you is that there's people, I, I, I recently had a friend and he's very known in the community that in the industry that I'm in of entrepreneurship, but he assumed that a lot of people knew who he was. So they messaged him and they said, have you ever heard of ABC, which is one of the things that he's, uh, he specializes in. He says, what the heck, what have I done? Right. Why don't people know that this is what I do? Well, there's a whole world just in the United States alone. When it comes to when it comes to people really knowing the beauty of podcasting and the essence of podcasting and why podcast, right? Because some, you know, some, some of the people that I know, sometimes I get criticized because I do so much social media. Like, what's the point? You know, do you actually monetize it? And that's one of the things that I want to touch on is monetizing and profitability. So not necessarily I'm going to be getting paid for specifically that pot this podcast right you're doing it here for free and for fun i'm doing it here for free and for fun but when i started doing getting very serious about tiktoking which i'm very passionate about i didn't necessarily yes i did make a little bit of money from tiktok itself from the platform 
but nothing that I could go and take, you know, take a trip about, right? But because of how I was staying consistent and I was staying relevant and I, and I was doing it every single day for a significant amount of months, I actually started getting clients, paid clients, because they were watching me, right? They didn't want to do it the way that I was doing it because I'm a Mexican female entrepreneur that I'm bringing on my own, my own essence, you know, to the mix of TikTok. I had a, a medical doctor that hired me because he was launching a, um, a medical practice. You know, I had a public speaker that was used to speaking in audiences of 20,000 people or more in, you know, live, but he didn't know how to do the TikTok, right? So there's all these things that even though I quote unquote didn't get paid to be on TikTok because of TikTok, it opened up a lot of a lot of doors. So if you don't mind, I would love for you to to really expand more about you get. I did you become a mil, a, a millionaire because you started a podcast type of thing? So the answer is no. And anybody who asks you the question on why do you do this if you're not monetizing, immediately that is a trigger to throw everything they say in, in the trash because they don't get it because it's about brand building and building a brand isn't an overnight process. Building a brand takes days, weeks, months, years, decades. I've been doing this full time for the last 12 years and I have not even scratched the surface because here's the thing, the majority of the world doesn't have the self-awareness or the consistency to play the long game. So that's why uh, they will never have the things or create the things that we do when we are willing to do the things that they aren't, right? So with me having been doing this every single day for 12 years, and I have no plan of stopping anytime soon. So this is happening into perpetuity. All right, well, I am always getting better, and growing, and growing, and growing. And you look at some of the, the best thought leaders in the world, Jesse Itzler, Ed Milet, Tony Robbins, you sit there, they all started at zero. Yet, would that same person say when those guys were at zero, why in the world are you investing in your brand? Are you monetizing it right this second? Oh, no, but that's Tony Robbins. Things were different. Uh, actually, no, we all started at zero, right? Because this is what brand building is. And this is one of the pillars that I coach for thought leaders on brand building. It is long-term mindset. And Maria, there's really two ways, and this is Entrepreneurship 101, that you think about this. The macro vision, the big vision, long into perpetuity with daily micro action consistently. So you've got the big vision of the thing that you would love to create. How in the world do I do that? Day after day, I show up, I show up, I show up. People know, love, and trust you, man. I love Maria on TikTok. I love her on TikTok. Maria, you said it yourself with me. Rob, I keep seeing you. I keep seeing you. I keep seeing you. And it got you to launch your podcast. So all of a sudden, I created a testimonial in you and living proof because it is inevitable. When you're amazing at this, someone's going to say, Maria, where in the world did you learn to podcast? And what are you going to say? My first guest was Rob Cressy. He showed me how to podcast. Go and talk to Rob. And exactly what you said, people don't understand that this is like a hub and a spoke. All the content you create are the opportunities to build relationships, get awareness. And now all of a sudden, this is how people start to come to you in different ways. Oh, meet my friend Rob, meet my friend Maria. So for me, I build business relationships and friend relationships via my podcasts. And that indirectly is how I monetize. Everybody is just so short-sighted in thinking I'm trading one minute for $1.
And that is not the game that we're playing. Well, and you know, that, that is so true because one of the things that I remember when I first started doing TikTok and actually it was, you know, to give credit to where credit is due, it was a 14, a 13 year old little girl that actually I was dating this gentleman at the time and this little girl, I was trying to connect with her. And she actually, I, my first launch at TikTok was me dancing with this, you know, teenager. And I was so like, this is so silly. Like, I'll never do this. And I remember I paused it, but I couldn't escape all the things that were going on with TikTok and all the things that were happening and, and things, you know, and since doing, doing that, there's a lot of things that have happened because I've been consistent on TikTok. I remember I'm also in the nonprofit world. I remember one of my friends in the nonprofit world early in my TikTok days. And he called me literally and he said, oh my gosh, Maria, are you doing that TikTok thing? What are you going to do next? Are you going to be start dancing or something? Like, really? What's going on, Maria? Well, moving forward months and months and months later, and I kept telling him, I was like, look, friend, if you really want to get your nonprofit message out, you got to get on social media omnipresence, right? It, it's, you can get your message out to enough people by just belly to belly. And, you know, he criticized me. He, he mocked me because I was doing TikTok. Guess where he's at now? TikTok. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's the power of, like if enough of us do it consistently enough, eventually, even those that are mocking us, jump in the wagon. So here's the thing. I live in coach having a one of one mindset. What anybody else does, irrelevant to me. Mm -hmm. I know how I'm getting down. This is my life. I'm going to create this however I want. At the same time, Maria, that person is an energy vampire. So always think, what would Rob say? And then what is this person next to me saying? So when that person is spewing trash, judgment, fear, self-limiting beliefs, what I hear is they can't do what you're doing. So let me bring Maria down to my level. Whereas if we listen to the Rob voice on the other side of things, it says, well, what would Rob tell me to do? And it would say, do more of what you love. Do more of that platform. Dance your heart out. So, so many people are like, oh my God, why would you dance on TikTok? Um, it's fun. I can see your heartbeat. I love dancing. I dance all the time on social media in my Instagram stories. Why? Rob, there's like an energy and a vibe about you. You're so positive and fun. And it's like, let's juxtapose that versus the person who is not on there telling everybody else that they suck. Huh? Success leaves breadcrumbs. And I'm not willing to go down the path of the person who talks like a loser. I would rather go down the path of the person who says, Maria, keep doing what you're doing. Let that flag fly. I love it. You know, and I'm, 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 I want to stay cognizant of the time. And I know that you, we have, if we have a short, uh, a short little bit, um, one of the things that I want to make sure that we touch base on, because in your, um, in your social media, you talk about the, you know, the same things that similar to what Jesse has taught us that is not just one thing, right? You don't want to just, I know a lot of, a lot of very successful individuals that are very successful at monetizing or they're very successful at their career, but they neglect their children, their spouse, their whatever else, right? What I love, one of the many things that I love about you is that you even have the dad life, right? Uh, being a dad, being a father. My nonprofit, Miracles, is all about the importance of fathers, the importance of uh, masculinity, the importance of uh, the father absent crisis. So one of the things that I do want to go in, in with you is the relevancy of having, you know, again, the BYLR life, you know, building your, your full life resume, not just, you know, is Rob all about podcasting for the sake of his career? But I know, you know, like, I love some of your, uh, some of your story as to how you and your wife are, you know, doing life together, you know, with, with, with everything that is involved. So can you talk more about how do you implement as an entrepreneur, as a solopreneur, doing all, not living any aspect of your life, because you're also a very active participant 
in Jesse Itzler's program. So can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, and it's very simple and very relatable because I was not this human 12 years ago. So for what you said, Maria, is that for a decade of my life, I got paid good money doing digital advertising sales and I was great at it, but I did not wake up every single day looking forward to what I was doing. So I was very much the work hard, play hard, ad sales party bro. And it's great because you can fill up some buckets of your life. I was happy. I was having fun. Uh, I was making good money. Boom. Look at this. Rob's life is amazing, except I didn't have a relationship. Um, my health definitely had room for improvement in so many other things. I was not living a holistic life. I was living, I won't say a very hedonistic life, but it's somewhere in between where I was having a lot of fun and it was great. And it was when I left my corporate job and went to zero. So I'm now making zero dollars. I wake up in the morning and everything's on me. I had complete freedom for the first time in my life. No one was going to tell me what to do, when to do at any point. And for a lot of people, it's like, whoa, that's a lot of decisions to make. And for me, I was like, whoa, look at all these decisions I get to make. And two things happened that changed my life. Number one, I became self-aware. You can make a ton of money and be successful in business and not have self-awareness because I lived it. And I was never taught self-awareness. Mind-blowing. All through school, through college, in the corporate world, at no point in 30 years did the word self-awareness come into my orbit. How that is possible blows my mind today. But it didn't. So I wasn't self-aware enough to understand how I was not filling up the other buckets of my life and the effect that that had on me not getting into relationships or other things that I was not creating in my life. And then, and then the second thing that happened, remember I'm at zero, is I adopted a growth mindset. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, I got to figure out what to do. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I love what I'm, this journey that I'm on. But it doesn't mean I know what I'm doing. Welcome to Entrepreneurship 101. So I started to audit the success habits of the most successful people in the world and seeing what are their habits, routines, mindsets, the people that I wanted to be like and inspire to do things like. And I slowly but surely started to pick up little things. Like the, the game changer of them all was the average CEO reads 60 books a year. And I looked at myself and I was like, crap, I read zero. Think I need to get on, I think I should get on this. So if something is important enough, you will always find time to make it happen. And I'm not reading currently, how do I do this? So I was like, this is a key. I've heard it like 60 times, like this is a thing. So I guaranteed that I would make this happen every day by doing it first thing in the morning. The last 12 years, I have read a book for 30 minutes every single day, weekends included, for 12 years straight. Why? Because the average CEO reads 60 books a year and I was reading zero. And I created every excuse for why I couldn't, shouldn't read. So when is there always time? The very first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. So that habit changed my life. Because once I understood that I could read and learn, then it's like, check out this book, check out this book, check out this thing, check out this thing. Here's Jesse, here's Grant Cardone, here's Ed Milet, here's Tony Robbins, here's Ryan Holiday. And you're like, oh my God, can you believe how many amazing people and amazing knowledge that is out there? And this set me on the journey of self-mastery and personal growth and development and filling up all the buckets of my life. Because remember, no one was telling me to work out or not, except for all those books and podcasts saying, yeah, all these highly successful CEOs, they're usually working out before they go to work. And they're working out in the morning. So they're waking up early and they're reading. So all of a sudden I'm like, check, let's do this. Check, let's do this. 
Next thing you know, I've got a two hour morning routine every single morning that I absolutely love. It is effortless. It is flowing. It is the best thing in the world. Why? Because I prioritize myself first and it creates me into the best version of myself every single day. So to wrap a bow on this, Maria, how in the world do I live a holistic life? Well, number one, I prioritize myself. I live as if business isn't the most important thing in my life, my family and myself, and then my business. Wait a second, Rob, you as an entrepreneur and a high performer, you cannot say that business is not the number one thing in your life. That's illegal. We're not allowed to say those things. We're supposed to be grinding on the holidays. Yep, I lived that life for a decade. I'm never going back that way. It doesn't mean I don't care the most because I do. It doesn't mean I don't work hard because I do. But I come from a place of love and creation. And because of that, I fill up every single bucket of my life because I have that opportunity. And so do you. Well, and what I love about what you're saying and, you know, it, when it comes to your social media as well, is, is what, it's what um, Sarah Blakely and Jesse Esler talk about, right? If you, and I had because I, I used to be like you, I used to just be laser focused, work, 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 work. And then the pandemic showed up and I was just like, oh my gosh, I moved to California to marry my future ex-husband. And now there's no one around me. It's me, myself, and I, right? There was no other humans. And it really made put things into perspective as to how I had prioritized work, 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 because I was always around humans anyways, and it was going to work itself out. So one of the things that I love about what Je um, Jesse Itzler and Sarah Blakey talk about is that in order for you to have things to talk about, you know, when he is, uh, when they're sitting maybe at, at a dinner table with Warren Buffett, is to have interesting things to share, you know, to have life experiences, you know, that that she hates flying and but she flies anyways, right? <laughs> she may have some liquid courage for the flying, but she still does all these incredible things with girlfriends, with her kids, with, you know, with all these different things. How is it that you, because like, for instance, right now you and I are both doing the volunteer for 365 65 days with uh, all day running right and i and i love one of your one of your episode one of one of your stories where you're like i didn't get it done last night but i'm getting a double today right can can you speak about how a lot of people talk about the importance of having balance right which to me to me, that's just like, you gotta, you gotta look at, you, you would never go to a, to a new mom who just had a baby and say, you mom, you, you new mom, you should really think about having new balance, right? Life is about perfectly unbalanced balance, if that makes sense. So can you really talk about how is it that, how do you dedicate time for your wife? You know, how do you dedicate time for your, for all the things that are relevant in your life? and still have time for Rob in the morning to do exceptional things like being part of the BYLR program, to be part of the calendar club, to be part of exceptional things that you do. And then to have this podcast that you, you I didn't realize, I, I mean, I know that you had told us, but I didn't realize you had done it for over a decade. You know, so how is it that you do all of this and still have time to, dedicate time to what's relevant at the end of your life? Great question. So there's another quote that changed my life. And I learned this from my branding coach, live by design, not by default. The majority of the world shows up every single day doing the same things, not making decisions on their own volition. Whereas when you live by design, AKA sort of like the pillar of how we live in the build your life resume community, you get to design every single aspect of your life. Oh, all right. So with that, you will never, ever hear me say the word balance. I don't believe in it. I think it's loser talk because it's self-limiting to believe that somehow we need a teeter-totter that's like 50%, 50%. Uh, I live a life where I love everything that I do. By design, I don't need balance in my life because 
All right. There's so many buckets that I feel that you're talk that you've talked about here that even just thinking about the concept of balance, like what am I trying to balance? Like Rob not doing anything versus Rob doing things. And a lot of this comes from the mentality that I don't believe in of like nine to five living for the weekend. I'm done with that life. So yeah, that's where I can see where people li- try and live this balance. How are you get creating time for yourself when you're working 12 hours a day? Uh, that's why I dedicate two hours every single morning to myself first. I am the priority. I am the machine. I am the product. So how about we invest in the number one thing? And then the next thing for you uh, would be commitment. That the reason that I did two workouts yesterday is because when I make a commitment, I stick to it. And it was such a unique circumstance for me to actually miss the day. And it's unique because I actually gave myself permission to miss the day as a high-performing, highly disciplined person. Why? My dad was in town all weekend. And so we had people staying with us. We also have a one-year-old child. I am also doing two workouts a day, my regular workout, and then my all-day running company workout. I'm just giving you context for the world that I operated in. My dad leaves Monday morning, and at 6 o'clock p.m., I'm literally ready to go to bed. I'm like, I am spent. Of course, in the back of my mind, the entire time is a loop. That's like, when you get in your second workout in, when you get in your second workout in. And I said, you know what? I'm not doing it today, which is so unlike me because I have done Andy Frisella's 75 hard mental toughness program. And I did the entire live hard program for the entire year. I am literally a model of consistency but I'm also a personal growth coach and I understand the story that we tell ourselves. So for a lot of people, when they lack commitment, they're making excuses. For me, I was giving myself permission, but guess what? I'd made a commitment to the all day running company for 14 days. So I'd worked out for an hour in the morning and then I'm like, all right, well, I know I'm at least getting today's, workout in. And I was like, "Uh, no, you're getting both of them in. So it was back to back. And it's like, all right, let's get yesterday's in. And this is such a good high performing tip for every entrepreneur, because a lot of people would just take the zero and move on to the next day. Nope. I'm going to make sure I did the next day. So check. And then I'm going to do today. Check. And to wrap a bow on this, Maria, the way that I make time for all of this in my life. And I have become an expert at this. Certainly having a one-year-old child right now is my relationship to time. And most people's relationship to time is crap. Let me know if this sounds familiar. I don't have enough time. I'll get to it Sunday. Oh man, where did all the time go? The majority of the world lives in lack in scarcity and not enoughness as it relates to their relationship with time, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. We live and then we die and there's infinite time in between there. Yet somehow we're going to live our entire lives as if we did not have enough time until you get to the end and you're like, oh my God, I didn't actually use my time for anything that I care about. So while going through The first year of having a child, I was very challenged with my relationship to time. And high-performing Rob is still used to doing and creating all the things that he wants, the entrepreneur. But now here's a brand new baby that I want to spend time with. But my mind's like, what else can you be doing? What else can you be doing? And the story I was telling myself about my relationship to time was not serving me. I was living in a lack. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And I'm like, whoa. What's up with that story? All right, light bulb. So now I started to do some internal work and I created for myself over the course of the last year, the four stages of time mastery. The beginner says, I don't have enough time. They live in lack and live in scarcity. The next level 
The next level up goes, I am that I have more than enough time to get everything done. So when I was auditing this, I said to myself, well, how about I just take the excuse that I don't have enough time off the table? Would that be a good thing? And I was like, yeah, it'd be a great way to live where there would never be the excuse of I can't run, I can't launch a podcast, I can't talk to Maria. Why? Because my state of being is I have more than enough time to get everything done. Remember, all this is is a choice and a lens, right? All it is, we get to make up the story. So I'm living in that. I'm like, wow, I'm now living in an abundance of time. And that doesn't mean I get to everything that I want to do. It just means I'm not living in lack. Mm -hmm. So after that, um, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to song and the light bulb went off and the song goes, and time is just a blessing. And I was like, and I heard the song like 50 times before. It's one of my favorites. And I was like, wait a second, what did you just say? And this became the next level of time mastery. And I went home and I wrote in my notebook and I was like, what are all of the instances in which time is a blessing in my life? And I was like, oh my God, time is a blessing when I can spend it with my wife and my son. And when I'm with the Build Your Life Resume community and when I'm on a podcast with Maria and when I wake up every day and I read and I love what I'm doing. And I just went through all of this list and I looked and I was like, oh my God. I can't believe I haven't seen that time is a blessing in my life because look at all these blessings that it's created. But wait, we're not done yet. There's one more level to this levels of mastery. So as a personal growth coach, I create with people on a wide variety of things. And one of my clients came to me and was like, Rob, my wife is habitually late and I hate it. And whenever she's late, it then ruins whatever we're going to do because I get angry and then our dinner's terrible. And I don't want that anymore. I was like, that makes complete sense. I get it. I'm a stickler for time too. It's like, I don't want to feel that. So what can we create? And I was like, all right, well, you can choose how you show up when your wife is late. You're choosing to be angry with her. So now it creates a negative snowball. So how about instead of being angry with her, you dance with her when she's late. He's like, what? And I was like, yeah, the next time she is 10 minutes late and comes out of the bedroom, I want you to dance with your wife and then see what happens. He's like, all right, I'm open to that. Let's see what will happen. Comes in the next week and he's like, dude, you will not believe what happened. When I started dancing with my wife, she started laughing and was like, what are you doing? And he goes, babe, I am dancing with time. Oh my goodness. The light bulb went off. The fourth level of mastery is I am that I dance with time because as I started to unpack this in my own life, because as a coach, we're creating it. It applies to everybody. I was like, man, imagine if I lived my life as if I'm dancing with time. So I can meet a negative with a positive like this. But guess what? What is dancing like? Sometimes you're going this way. Sometimes you're going this way. Sometimes you really like the song. Sometimes the song not for you. And that's the way that life is. Some days you're having an amazing days. Boom. You're really loving that song. Other days it's not your best day. But guess what? You can still dance with the up and down of time. And once I saw this, boom, I don't have enough time. I have more than enough time. Time is a blessing. I am that I dance with time. That's how I create time in my life to do anything that I want with everybody I want. Oh my gosh. I love it. And if anybody's listening to this and they're not taking massive notes, they're totally missing it. So I know that we're going to be running out of, t- well, we're, we're basically out of time, but before we, before we wrap up, before I ask you my last questions, there's two questions that two, two more things that I mm. had like from you. One, I know that people are going to ask, what's the name of the song and who sings them? Yeah. Uh, so the name of the artist is Paul Isaac, I-Z-A-K. Uh-huh. Um, and okay. I don't know the name of the song, but here's the thing. And you'll love this, Maria. So I discovered Paul and he is a Hawaiian farmer that runs a farm called Yo Garden. And he is also a musician. 
He has dreadlocks and a big beard and a wife and a new baby. And he is a conscious musician. He talks about um, love and meditation and peace and, and togetherness and good vibes and energy and one. And I discovered him on a YouTube channel called Sugar Shack Sessions. It's a place in Florida that does high-end production out of a small house. And they bring a bunch of people just to jam on a guitar. So I was just letting the YouTube channel play. And I heard this song called Dragonfly Lullaby by Paul Isaac. And I was like, whoa, what are these vibes? Sign me up for this. It was just a melody that was just singing in my heart. So I looked him up on Spotify and then I followed him on Instagram and I was hooked. And during the pandemic for two years straight, I listened to Bob Marley and Paul Isaac nonstop because it filled my life with good vibes. Oh my gosh, I love it. Now, now I want to go listen to it. So before I ask you my last question, I know that you offer a suite of services, right? So we talked about your coaching. Can you, can you give us a rundown of the services that you offer? How do people reach out to you? If people want to start their own podcast, you know, how do they go about all of your services? Yeah. Number one, you can go to robcressy.com or hit me up on all social media platforms at Rob Cressy. I've also got a podcast called Best Year Ever, which you can listen everywhere or watch on YouTube. And in terms of my services, there's really two ways that I help people. Um, personal growth or personal brand. On the personal growth side of things, I've got a program called Design Your Best Self. You can go to designyourbestself.com. And what it is, is it helps people uh, do more of what they love, show up powerfully and be the best version of themselves. So essentially what I did is I reverse engineered the last 12 years of my life of being a high performer and investing in my personal growth and development to help people design who they want to be. And this isn't about being Rob. It's about being the best version of you. And once again, like we've talked about, it helps to have the pathway to say, here's ways to think, here's things to do in all of it by design is lifestyle by design. So designyourbestself.com. And then the second part is on the personal brand side. If you want to launch a podcast, uh, you can go to robcressy.com backslash voice. Uh, I've got three different versions. I've got a podcasting program called Shining Your Voice. Um, and I also have a one-on-one -on -one package for people who are thought leaders who say, hey, Rob, I want this to be easy, effortless, and fun. And I want full audio, video, and everything in between. Very similar to what you experienced, Maria, with uh, Jesse's group there. So robcressy.com, you can do either of those. I would love to be a champion for you in all of this. What about someone who is just getting started? They're, they they think that it's going to take massive amounts of money and they look at you and, you know, they think, I can't afford it. So first off, throw that self-limiting beliefs in the trash because right. it's not serving you. Because number one, you can think, there's really three things about hiring coach. You can either, if you want to launch a podcast, one, figure out on your own, or two, find somebody who can help you do it faster, better, easier. So if you think that you can't afford it, well, guess what? I've got a ton of free resources on my website. Go to robcressy.com backslash resources. I have an ebook. I've got a checklist. I've got a YouTube channel. I've got a podcast. I literally pour my heart out for anybody who wants to be a creator or launch a podcast or make themselves better. So if you say, Rob, Times are tough right now and I can't afford it. I got you. But if you say, Rob, I want to launch a podcast in a month or less, guess what? I got you. It's not expensive. It's very affordable. How do I know? Because I designed this for people who were where I was. Because I remember going on webinars and you hear something, you're like, oh my God, that is unbelievable. And they're like, and the cost is only $15,000. And I'm like, oh my God, this could change my life, but I don't have a fraction of that money. So I make what I do very affordable. And I promise you, when you invest in yourself, whether it's in your personal growth or your personal brand, it will come back to you in spades. Maria, you know this, I know this. We have seen the blessings in our lives. When you invest in yourself in a program, 
an inner coach. It's actually a good thing when it hurts a little bit. You know why? Because that means you're going to show up and be committed. And you say, you know what? I'm going a little bit above and beyond to make sure that I'm part of this program. And I am going to squeeze every single drop out of this thing. And you're going to look back in every single program I've ever been a part of. I say that was the best thing I've ever done. Absolutely. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. One thing that I want to make sure is that how do they spell robcressy.com? R-O-B-C-R-E-S-S-Y.com. Thank you. Thank you. And my last question for this podcast is, what is the one thing, what is the one thing that you think people must do, must do to win at the game of life, whether it's entrepreneurship or the whole, the whole arching game of being a human being? What is the one thing that Rob says, you must do this? You don't must do anything you get to. And you get to, and the thing would be um, creating the story you tell yourself. Mm -hmm. You are your number one greatest asset and also roadblock in your life. Because if things are not being created like you want, it's because of you. You're creating things in your life, it's because of you. And our self-talk never goes away. It is always on. It is always on. And we live in a world that is designed to steal your attention and put it on somebody else's agenda. So there's so many people, and there's probably a lot of them listening or watching right now that wake up and immediately check their email and Slack and social media, and then turn on the news within the first 10 minutes of being up. And immediately the world is just feeding them everything that they want, fear, judgment, self-limiting beliefs, comparison. You're not good enough. The world is falling. What is that doing for your self-talk? It is killing it. But if you want to be the best version of yourself, you know that you have the choice of designing the story that you tell yourself every single day. And then you create a consistency process that says, all right, what is my habit? for telling myself the story of the best version of myself. Why is my morning routine two hours? Because so much of that is self-cultivation. Every single day, I'm recreating myself in the story I tell myself. Because as the day goes on, boom, I'm ramping up. And then three o'clock hits and it goes back down. So the next morning, I get to ramp it back up and then it goes back down. And here's the thing, so many people in the world Never ramp up once, nonetheless, every single day, nonetheless, multiple times a day. Control the story you are telling yourself and it will change your life forever. Now, those are powerful words, incredibly powerful words. And with that, Rob, thank you so much for being my first. I, I am incredibly grateful. I'm incredibly grateful that more people we, we, will hear about the importance of having a podcast, the importance of how when they come to you, they can do all the YouTubing and, and researching it for themselves or they can come to you at a one-stop shop and get everything for free or for fun or actually go to the next level that is very affordable and actually hire you and, and know how to do it right the first time. Uh, to close off this, this is Maria Lupita winning at the game of life incredibly grateful for be, this being my first podcast with one of the best podcasters that you can learn from. And Rob, if you don't mind, I'm actually going to have to have you back after my 20th because there is so many more, you know, I keep, I, I keep looking at the clock. I'm just like, oh my gosh, I, I want to go into there and I want to go into there. So we'll definitely have you back, uh, you know, so that we can learn more tips as to how to win at the game of life specifically when it comes into entrepreneurship. So with that, have an amazing day. And just remember Rob's last words. Bye.